Mount Roraima has been described as an island in the clouds because of its large flat surface area alone up there in the sky. It's located deep within the Amazon and has remained untouched for millions of years. This has created one of the most isolated and biodiverse places on Earth. If you love Earth and geography, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn about new wonders of the world regularly. Jutting out about 2,800 meters or 9,200 feet into the sky, Roraima looks out onto Venezuela, Brazil, and Guyana. It sits at the border between the three nations, and there's even a marker on top of the mountain to commemorate this point. It's located mostly within this national park in Venezuela, and that's how most people ascend the mountain, with a guided trek. In 1884, Sir Everard M. Thurn and his expedition team discovered a forested ramp up to the plateau. Although, I'm sure some aboriginals were the ones who showed this to him, but we're getting distracted. This is the only quote-unquote easy way to get up the mountain, although there are other routes. They just require you to have a strong technical knowledge of rock climbing. You can also fly in from the Guyanese side to get beautiful panoramic views of the Amazon rainforest, along with the views of Roraima. The Brazilian side lies within this indigenous territory and is inaccessible without permission from the government. Indigenous people that lived in the area have always worshipped the mystical mountain, and it's easy to see why. Mount Roraima lies on the Guyana Shield, forming the highest peak of Guyana's highland range. It's a part of the larger Pacaraima mountain range and is one of many flat top mountains in the region. While the nearby Andes formed relatively recently, around 25 million years ago, this chain of mountains is far older. These types of flat top mountains are called Tupuis and are remnants of the supercontinent Gondwana. To make a long story short, over billions of years some sandstone lifted from the ocean creating massive towers called monodocks. Over time, these eroded, leaving behind the distinct flat-top tapuis towering over the surrounding lowlands around 70 million years ago. The top of Roraima is also covered in large, oddly shaped rocks, which helps to contribute to the already alien looking landscape. It also rains almost every single day on Roraima, and this paired with the constant mist and fog are key features of almost all the tapuis in the region. It's something that looks absolutely awe-inspiring from a distance. Like I said in the intro, Roraima has been described as an island in the clouds because of its large flat surface area alone up there in the sky. This has created one of the most isolated and biodiverse places on Earth within one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth, that being the Amazon rainforest, of course. I love this idea because it reminds me of those enclave within an enclave within an enclave situations with borders, but here you have layers and layers of biodiversity instead. The idea of a biodiverse area within another biodiverse area can go even deeper though because large crevices on top of the mountain exist. These allow for another separate biome within the mountain. It creates a kind of shielded middle ground between species on the ground and those on top of the mountain. The reason there's so much biodiversity is that the ancestors of the animals that came from the jungle evolved separately from those on the mountain. Because of this, they have adapted their own unique characteristics over time. In fact, around 35% of the species found on Roraima are endemic, meaning they're only found on the mountain. Also, 70% of species found on any of South America's tapuis exist only on those plateaus. Many of these animals happen to be different types of toads such as the Roraima bush toad, Many plants have developed short roots in order to thrive in the hostile rocky conditions. Some species are like living fossils, being virtually identical to plants and animals that are now extinct in the rest of the world. I think this really shows the age of these mountains. For millions of years, life has been existing completely independently on the Tapuis, hidden away from the rest of the world. It's easy to see why people from all over come to witness the beauty and awe of this ancient mountain deep in the Amazon. Thanks for watching Odd Earth. We show off places around the planet that'll leave you in awe. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Also, go ahead and leave a comment below with future video ideas or criticisms that could make the channel better. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.